my topic today is called what are you really holding to an anchor a rock i have a couple key verses that i want to use to help set this message of going starting with hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1 here begin at the reading of god's holy word let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Hebrews 6 and verse 19 says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entered into that within the veil. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. I'm going to try to make these texts come together and bring about a, a challenge and an encouragement in your life. I have two points that I want to use as always to help this going. Point number one says the importance of your anchor. Point two says the anchor is on the rock. Praise the Lord. Before I begin this text, I wanted to just try to set up how this is going to flow and how I actually want it to flow. It says, what are you really hurrying to? An anchor and a rock. And I'm going to highlight that these are two different things. Number one, an anchor is one thing and a rock is something else. We're going to clearly find out what the anchor is and what the rock is. And it's not no secret. I start out and I've used as my Text Matthew 14, and it's the well known account of when Peter asks Jesus, who he finds walking on water. And he says, Well, look, if it's really you, Jesus, and you're doing it, then let me come to you. And we know that Jesus allows him to come, and he gets so far. And then he starts to sink, as the text says, he looks around, and reality sets in. It's one thing to say you got faith. <laughs> it's a old saying. Um, it's one thing to say you got faith, and then it's another thing to face the reality of the challenge you might be facing. And that challenge could be: Listen, I believe in God, and I know God can take care of me. But then you start getting sick, and then they say, "Oh well, you don't got a bill. <laughs> That's a death sentence. It ain't no cure for that." Do we just roll over and die? Or do we really exercise faith and say, well, look, Lord, we know that you can heal me. I know that you can heal me. I know also that this is a death sentence if you don't. So I rest my faith, true faith, in the reality that the only way I'm going to die is if that's what God wants. And that's a very simplistic way of saying where your faith really lies. Peter's faith was tested when he got in that water. The anchor analogy that I want to use today, it's a way of using and describing what you're holding on to. Now, you're going to see that that terminology of what you're holding on to is based on what you believe. So that becomes your anchor. What you believe becomes your anchor. So every day... <laughs> You got your anchor. This is what I'm holding to. I want you to know that everybody has an anchor. And when I say everybody, I mean the Christians. I mean the Jews. I mean the Hindus. I mean the Muslims. The Muslims have their anchor. They hold to that anchor very firmly. The Hindus do the very same thing. What I'm going today is to point to what should be your anchor in your walk with God. So the terminology comes into play where I ask the question, what are you really holding on to? Because what you're holding on to becomes your anchor. Okay? Now, the Muslims are holding on to their belief. The Hindus are holding on to their belief. And let's not play games here. They are very committed. They have a high level of commitment, of integrity with respect to what they're holding on to, to the anchor 
that the Holy One to. And that alone is keeping millions, if not billions of them in their walk. Even in this Christian walk, there are different denominations that ascribe to be Christians. But the anchor that they hold is different than the anchor we hold. The Catholics have a different anchor that they hold on to than we hold on to. Those Mormons who claim to believe in the same God have a different anchor that they're holding on to. I want to point to the anchor we hold on to and help you to understand that that anchor has to be attached to something. If anyone knows anything about a boat, you understand that you need an anchor if you want to be able to stop in certain areas and go fishing in this area or to stop for a while, you need an anchor. But an anchor by itself cannot do anything for you. The anchor, when it's thrown over, has to attach to something. If not, it just continues to drift along. The anchor needs to connect to some type of rock, something solid, something real, something tangible, so that it holds. Your anchor has to be attached to what I say today has to be the rock. And that rock that was used as a pun is Christ. That's what I want to present today. What are you holding on to? An anchor and a rock. So let's see how this Holy Spirit is gonna let this through. Point number one, the importance of your anchor. So let's look at how this anchor operates in our lives. Hebrews 6 verses 11 to 15, Paul says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence of the full assurance of the hope unto the end, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. For when God made promises to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, surely blessings I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. This is the first little example that you see of an anchor. The anchor that being described her is a promise that Abraham had. So Abraham's holding on to that promise. That promise becomes his anchor. That promise becomes his hope. Look at John 15 and verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. I just gave you the word that God spoke to Abraham. That word became his anchor. Jesus says her in John 15 that you become clean through that same word that I have spoken unto you. It cleans you. It's your anchor. It's your whole hope. It's the promise that you cling to in your life. Hebrews 4, verses 1 to 3 says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith, in them that heard it. I want to stop it for one quick second before I go on so that you understand because I'm dropping this on you. Those of us that are familiar with Hebrews know that Paul was constantly in these early chapters of Hebrews referring back, Pastor, to the condition and state that the Israelites had got into when they was in the wilderness. So when you hear him talking with this talk, it's talking about when they were in the wilderness. And it's saying that, listen, they started out all right. They got the same stuff like everybody else got. But because they didn't hold on to the anchor, they didn't hold on to that word. They didn't take the anchor and be able to grasp it with faith. Stuff starts to happen in their lives. Verse 3 says, for we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished 
from the foundation of the world. Saints, our anchor is our belief and trust in God's word. When we take God at his word and hold on to that word, it becomes an anchor in our life that keeps us safe, secure, and confident in all that we face. So many people miss it. I'm going to continue to refer back to the Israelites in that setting when they were in the wilderness. Because you're going to see over and over that they represent us today in so many ways. Paul says in the Hebrew so that they had the same word as us, but those were mixed with faith. So this anchor, as children of God, we have an anchor that's in God's word. We all have God's word. God's word cannot do nothing for you if it's not being held and accepted from a position of true and real belief, true and real faith. This anchor that's meant to hold us as a child of God has to be taking God at his word and holding on to it. Despite what the circumstances are, you hold on to the anchor which is the promises that God gives us. Look at Hebrews chapter 3. In this text, I want us to understand who's talking about. Paul, at this time, is quoting what God said concerning Israel. So this is God talking. He says, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are partakers of Christ, huh? condition, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast all the way to the end. This ain't got some time then, Pastor. You gotta hold it <laughs> all the way to the end. You heard a saying that keeps coming up in her, and I want us to really pay attention to it because it's very important. This rest. And God says, because they continue to err in their ways, they could not enter into the rest. The rest that we have today. And the rest that's being talked about here is our inheritance. Those guys lost their rest. They lost their inheritance in that the majority of them who started out did not get the inheritance of the promised land. So when we today miss out on our rest and miss out on our inheritance, it could be twofold. Because there are Christians today that will miss out on their inheritance because they don't do the works. They got too much flammable stuff going on in their life. Too much wood, hay, and stubble going on in their lives. As opposed to fully committing their way to God and having some precious stones that are inflammable. Gold, precious stones, and silver. So they lose, they may get to heaven, but they're going to lose the inheritance that they should get. And worst of all is those who start out, but because the anchor is not being held onto, because the anchor is not in the place that it should be, they become like Peter and start to sink. And if you sink without reaching out and asking God to hold you, you're going and you lost your complete rest. You lost your all of your inheritance because you no longer even go to heaven. It's not no one saved, always saved. We have to hold the line. Over and over, Jesus says that even in Revelation, he that and she that endureth to the end shall be saved. Not who starts out well. Not who looked for it in the beginning. He that endures to the end 
shall be saved. Let us continue. Hebrews 4, verses 11 and 12. Paul says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of the unbelief I just told you about. How, let's not fall. It's not one saved, always saved. For the word of God can actually make a difference in your life. Because the word of God is quick, it is powerful, it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. This is the anchor. This is what the anchor can do. Look at Hebrews 6. Paul says, we're in God willing more abundantly to show the heirs of his promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Immutability, the unchangingness. God's word is unchanging. That by two immutable things in which it was first of all impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation in our anchor who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. What is the hope? Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entered into that within the veil. Our hope takes us into the veil of God, takes us beyond the veil that kept us separated from God. This hope, we must keep holding to the beginning of our confidence, steadfast to the end. We can only endure to the end if we are anchored in our belief in God's words. Hold to the line of our anchor. God has given us an anchor in his words. That hope of who God is and how God expresses and explains who he is in his word. We hold on to that as an anchor because that's the reality of the hope that we have. I read to you earlier about Abraham. Abraham held on for all them years knowing that he had an anchor, which was a promise. That text that said it was too immutable, too unchangeable things. God couldn't swear by nobody higher. He swore by his own name. I remember in high school, if you wanted somebody to believe you, you would say, oh, I swear on my mama. Oh, I swear on my dad. Because that was the highest thing. God could swear on nobody higher. He swore on his own name. So it's too immediate. God can't lie. So the promise is to us. It's unchangeable. It's a surety. You have God's word. We know people that give the word. And we know that person gave the word. I'm another word about this. That person keeps their word. How much more is God's word to us? That becomes our anchor. That becomes our hope. That's what we hold on to. We take that word and we say, yeah, this word is true because it came from God. It came from God. But that word has to be completely connected to the reality of what is keeping that word together. What is the foundation of that word? What is the anchor of the anchor? What is the word holding on to? How is this word of God so sure for us? This leads us to point number two. The anchor is on the rock. This is what's going to make the difference in your life. All those other religions have their anchors. Have their anchors. They have their beliefs. They have their commitments to their beliefs. But they ain't anchored to our rock. Our anchor our beliefs, our hope is anchored on a rock. And that rock I'm going to show to you today is still Christ. He's described like this all through the scripture as that rock. And that rock is what gives our anchor stability so that when the waves of life and trials and tribulation start to pull, that anchor is attached to that rock. And as you hold on to the hope and you hold on to the word of God, it's connected to Jesus and the Holy Spirit will keep you. 
so that no matter what you face in these waves of life, as you go through the storms of life, you're anchored in your belief to the rock of all ages, the rock that cannot be moved, the rock of eternity, the rock that will keep you when you face whatever may come your way. Look at 1 Corinthians 10 and verses 1 to 5. Paul says her, moreover, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. They all went across the rare sea and they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And they did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Way back then, the rock was Christ. But he puts a body in their pastor. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. They had the anchor. They had the rock. But God was not pleased with a lot of them. And we're going to look at why God really wasn't pleased with them. Look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 26 to 31. This is the well-known text. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. He gives them an anchor. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if this is really the anchor, then bid me to come unto thee on the water. If it's really you, let me come. And Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. His anchor, his looking at Jesus, his connected to the rock. But verse 30 says, but when he saw and got distracted by the wind's boisterousness and he was afraid, he starts to lose grip of the anchor he had. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Saints, it's not a given in this war. It takes an effort on each of our parts to apply the word of God in our lives because circumstances are going to cause the anchor that you're holding on to to pull away. If that anchor doesn't stay connected to the rock, when Peter gets out of that boat and puts his feet down on a solid water, that's not ice, Pastor, and starts to walk, He's looking directly at Jesus and is in amazement. But when he starts to notice what he's doing, he no longer is connected to the rock. And then he starts to sink. Because the minute we take our eyes off of Jesus and start to operate in our own strengths and our own abilities and our own talents, we're going to start to sink. We immediately will start to sink. Despite the anchor he had is not connected to Jesus, so it's going to start to sink. The question today is, what are you holding on to? Because if you're not taking that anchor and keeping it connected to Jesus, the storms and the distractions of life are going to cause you to start to sink. Look at John 15 and 6. Jesus says it clear, warning his disciples, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. If he doesn't abide in me, if he doesn't stay connected to the rock, in this analogy, he uses the branches that we are a branch and that we are not connected to him, then this branch cannot bear any fruit and it's 
only fit to go into fire and be burned. It is not about, saints, how you start in this walk. It's not about how you start. It's not about the fact that Peter can't brag about the fact that he started to walk in the water. It's not about last year, last month, or even last week. What matters is your relationship with this rock, with the rock, now. Thanks, I say, stay anchored to the rock, Jesus Christ. That's our whole hope. That's our whole life today. Don't become so sure of yourself. Don't become confident in that you walk to the water a little bit. Every day, you've got to get up and face that man and that woman in the mirror. Every day, flesh wants to go his own way. Every day, you've got to be honest and say, Lord, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Stay anchored to the rock. Acts chapter 3, verses 2 to 8, and see what happens when you become anchored to that rock. It says her, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, when seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. You know, just expecting some type of finance, some type of help, some type of money. Peter says, silver and gold have I none. But what I do have, I give to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankles received strength. And then he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. This is what happens when you stay connected to the rock. There is power in a relationship with God. A big mouth, semi-crazy guy that was a fisherman called Peter turns into a mighty man of God. This guy, if you understand the life of these apostles, would have been somebody that Peter and John knew because the text said that he was crippled from his youth and that every day they took him to their temple. I want you to know that Jesus himself saw him and walked past him many times. He sat outside there every day asking for people to help him. Jesus did not heal him. Jesus never healed everybody that needed to be healed in them days. Jesus left him because Jesus knew that when Peter got his anchor connected to the rock and that Holy Spirit was in his life, he would be able to go and heal him. So Peter is now showing you what happens when you stay connected to the rock. And Peter does this miraculous healing. So much so that he goes in the temple with them. They say, praising God, leaping and jumping, skipping because of what Christ has done in his life. This is not stories that have been given to us just for us to say, wow, wow. This has been given to us so that we can aspire to have Christ in our lives. So we can aspire to do the same thing. We should be healing people. We should be casting out demons. We should be demonstrating the power of the presence of God in our lives. It's for us. It was nothing supernatural and special about Peter. Peter was a clown before the Holy Spirit came in his life. Peter was a foul-mouthed guy that denied to know Jesus. But when that Holy Spirit comes in and that hope he has stayed connected to Jesus Christ, that rock, he lived by faith. And the Holy Spirit becomes free and makes him powerful. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22 and 23. Paul says, let us draw near with a true heart 
in full assurance of faith. This is what we do with the anchor. We take that full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Pastor preached about that water today. This pure water now, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. It's important. We have to hold fast. It's telling you. It don't just happen. You have to make an effort to hold fast. You have to resist temptations in your life. You have to take that good word of God, the anchor, and keep it connected to Christ. It's when we do this, is when we are able to operate in power. The text says, hold fast to that which you have believed. That anchor you have, all the hope that you have in God's word has to stay connected to who Christ is. It can't be just some vain hope and crazy hope like these other religions have as their anchor. Because it's not connected to Jesus, sadly in the end, they'll find out that Jesus is Lord. They may be bowing to Buddha, to some Hindu God right now, to some Islamic God right now. But when they see Jesus, they'll fall down and they will say, Jesus is Lord. We're all going to say, Jesus is Lord. So I say to you today, saints, let's stay connected to who Christ is. Take the good news of God's word as your anchor and hook it on who Jesus is and what he has done every day in your life so that you're able to manage the temptations, the trials, the tribulations that come your way. Because it don't just stay that way. I've given you some small examples of how the Israelites, they had that rock. They had all those examples. They had all those anchors. But because they didn't stay connected, they didn't operate in belief. Peter walked on water just so that he could curse Jesus out later and swear to God that he never knew him. This is what happens when you don't stay connected to the rock. You're not guaranteed to be who you were yesterday, to be who you were last week. We don't operate in our own strength. We operate by the spirit of God in our lives, saints. And I'm warning you today, Continue to stay connected. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and 58. Paul says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, our rock. Therefore, because we have this victory, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Stay steadfast, unmovable, always upon me in the rock of the Lord. This is what happens when you're anchored to the rock. You're steadfast, you're unmovable. When you are anchored to the rock of salvation, you will know what you have. You will then be able to hold the line of truth. Keep holding to the anchor and the rock, Jesus Christ. This is what God has given me today, saints, to share with you. It's a simple message. The question is asked in the topic, what are you holding on to? There are many religions holding on to a whole lot of different beliefs. We have some special, more sure promises, but if we don't keep their promises, in light of who Christ is, that anchor is just drifting away. And you're going to start out walking on water and end up cursing and swearing and saying that you don't know who Jesus is. Keep your eyes on who Jesus is. I said earlier, it don't matter what you were last week. Don't matter what you were last year. It only matters every day what you're doing with your relationship with God right now. This is the safety button, Pastor. This is why I don't have to depend on myself. This is why I know 
that in me dwelleth no good thing. Unless the Holy Spirit has his way in my life, I'm going to go my own way. And I don't need to be doing all the most terrible sins in the world. I just need to be rejecting God at any level. And in my eyes and in God's eyes, I'm condemned. God wants us to be living in victory every day of our lives. And that's why Paul says in the end there, listen, stay steadfast, saints, unmovable, always abounding in the anchor of the promises that God has given to us in his word. Remembering what Jesus said, listen, if you don't abide in me, you're going to be cast forth and burned like a no wood branch. Be encouraged today, saints. Know what you're holding on to. And keep holding on to that truth. Stay anchored to the rock of our salvation. Remember, many of those started out in the wilderness. And they drank of that rock. And, and that rock was Jesus. But because they took their eyes over Jesus, like Peter got on the water, they began to sink and God wasn't pleased with them. Let's operate in faith today, saints, so we can be what God would have us to be. This is what God has given me today. I pray that as his message is going out, it continues to resonate in your spirits, that you would understand the simplicity of Christ. Take him at his words as an anchor. Keep that anchor connected to what Christ has done in your life every day, every single day, and you're going to have victory over sin and all that comes your way. Today, to that person out there that the Holy Spirit is whispering and saying, come to Jesus. Come to the rock. Come try Jesus. If this is where you are today, I pray that as this word has gone out and as the Holy Spirit whispers in your soul today and tells you to come to Jesus, that you will surrender. And as you surrender, repeat these words after me and receive the rock of Christ in your life. Lord, I realize that I am a sinner. Lord, I confess and repent of my sinful ways. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again so that my sins will be covered and so that I can have eternal life. Come into my heart as I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, God, for saving me. If this is what you have done, you are saved. It's that simple. It's a work that Christ done. You just have to believe and sincerely submit and commit your way to God as you believe in what Christ has done. And you are saved. The penalty of sin has been lifted. Please get in contact with us via these numbers so that we can continue to help you to grow and to take yourself from this level into sanctification and growth in your walk of God as your sins have been forgiven. All those that are saved already, I challenge you to continue to hold on to the rock. Make sure your anchor is still and always connected daily to the rock of our salvation. Let us continue to seek to make sure we know exactly what we're holding on to. And that has to be the rock of our salvation Jesus Christ. This is what God has given me today, saints. Be encouraged and I pray that God continues to bless and to keep you all in Jesus' name.